From drug deals, kidnapping, and assault to murder, this is the story of Sonny Barger, the leader of the most notorious bike gang, the Hells Angels. But first, let's have a look at his early life. Ralph Hubert Barger Jr. was born in Modesto, California on October 8, 1938. His surroundings were far from idyllic as he grew up in Oakland after the war. With industries collapsing and unemployment increasing, the city's fortitude was tested. Barger was a force to be reckoned with from a young age. School suspensions piled up as he brazenly battled with teachers and engaged in lively fights with his classmates. Formal schooling had lost its allure, prompting him to make the audacious decision to leave the halls of academia. While his peers fell to the dark seduction of narcotics, Barger boldly charted his course. He sought refuge in a simple grocery store amid the mayhem, earning an honest living amidst the metropolitan tumult. But deep within his core was a craving for something more, something remarkable. Barger set out on a daring trip that would change his life forever when he was just 16 years old. Enlisting in the United States Army, he desired the organization, fraternity, and weaponry expertise that awaited him. But fate had a horrible twist in store for them. The military chapter abruptly ended when a fake birth certificate was discovered, leaving Barger to negotiate the uncertainty that awaited him. When he returned to Oakland, he became a nomad, bouncing between lowly occupations and seeking refuge within the walls of his family's home. But little did he realize that this was just the beginning of the untold chapters of his exceptional life, a life destined for extraordinary exploits and unexpected turns in the world's shadowy corners. But his first step in this path was joining the Hell's Angels. The Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club was founded in Fontana, California in 1948. Sonny Barger, on the other hand, did not join until the late 1950s. In the early 1960s, he quickly ascended through the ranks and became the leader of the Hells Angels Oakland branch. The Oakland chapter rose in popularity and influence under his leadership. Several events contributed to Barger's elevation to leadership among the Hells Angels. To begin with, he was well known for his charisma, assertiveness, and excellent leadership abilities. Barger was a superb motorcycle rider with a fearless and rough demeanor. His ability to command respect and allegiance from other members aided his advancement within the group. Furthermore, Barger was involved in several high-profile actions that brought the Hells Angels to public attention, including the infamous Hollister Riot in 1947 and the Altamont Free Concert in 1969. Although controversial, these incidents cemented the Hells Angels' reputation as a rebellious and lawless motorcycle gang. Barger was also instrumental in growing the Hells Angels' influence beyond California. He assisted in the establishment of new chapters in various parts of the United States, so adding to the club's expansion and national prominence. But this life was full of drama, violence, and quite some time in the courtroom, which he referred to as his gangster era. It was a moment when various clubs and individuals attempted to undermine the Hells Angels' reputation. The black and Latino populations detested them, while white people were scared, hippies avoided them, and even rednecks despised them. According to Barger, the Hells Angels became increasingly isolated during this turbulent time. When Barger was arrested on narcotics charges in April 1970, his life changed drastically. The arrest occurred after a film studio property manager called Donald Howarth, who also happened to be Mr. America in 1967, was detained near Barger's home. Howarth was discovered with many illegal narcotics, including 17 ounces of cocaine and 30 ounces of heroin, with a street value of $350,000. To face the charges, Barger resigned as president of the Oakland chapter. However, he quickly returned to his position after his successor, John Johnny Angel Palomar, was sentenced to 10 years in jail for shooting a bartender. The narcotics accusations against Barger were eventually dropped, but Howarth was convicted and sentenced to five years to life in jail. Barger, on the other hand, received a 90-day jail sentence for leaving a court session. 
On January 22, 1972, another incident that contributed to the Hells Angels infamy occurred. Barger was involved in a high-speed chase through Redwood Regional Park with four other Hells Angels, including Russell Beya, Bobby Dirt England, Oakland Gary Popkin, and Bert Stephenson. The occupants of the vehicles, a Pontiac and a Cadillac, were accused of poaching by park guards. The chase ended when the Pontiac crashed into a tree after the pursuing rangers shot out its tires. England and Stephenson tried to flee into the brush, but were arrested. Three club prospects named William Hood, Russell Huddleston, and Danny Jarman were discovered within the trunk of the Pontiac. Hood and Jarman had been chained, gagged, and savagely assaulted, while Huddleston had somehow survived being slashed in the throat. Following a four-mile chase by converged police, Barger, Bayet, and Popkin were apprehended. During the pursuit, objects such as four handguns, a shotgun, surgical gloves, a belt with an ammunition bag, and a silver buckle engraved with the inscription, Sonny Barger Jr., 1957 to 67 President, Hells Angels, Oakland, were thrown from the fleeing Cadillac. Barger and the others were charged with attempted murder, kidnapping and assault with a deadly weapon. Hood and Jarman informed police that the event was simply an initiation hazing. Despite the Hells Angels attorney's assertions of insufficient evidence and an illegal search by arresting authorities, all five defendants ultimately pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of wrongful imprisonment. At this point, you'd think it would finally stop, but Barger, along with Hells Angels members Sergey Walton, Donald Dwayne, Whitey Smith, and Oakland Gary Popkin faced another serious charge. They were charged with the murder of Servio Winston Ajero, a drug dealer from McAllen, Texas, who had flown to Oakland with a cargo of cocaine on May 21, 1972. The murder was allegedly motivated by a disagreement over a $80,000 cocaine trade. A prosecution witness, Richard Evaldi, claimed that he saw Barger kill Aguero while he slept at the home of an absent acquaintance. Evaldi said that Barger then instructed the others to set fire to the house. The trial lasted seven weeks, but Barger and his three co-defendants were acquitted on December 29, 1972. Richard Evaldi's veracity was called into question, and Barger's girlfriend, Sharon Grulke, offered an alibi claiming that she was in bed with him at the time of the murder. Barger's lead counsel, James Crew, claimed that Ivaldi was involved in the plot to kill Aguero. Fearing reprisal from the Texas Mafia and knowing he was a main suspect, Ivaldi attempted to shift blame to the Hells Angels. A series of probably linked murders occurred in the local area at the time. The day after Aguero's murder, three men, including drug traffickers Kelly Patrick Smith, Willard Thomas and Gary Kemp were discovered shot to death at a residence near San Leandro. In addition, on May 26th, the body of a lady named Karen S. Long was discovered in the trunk of a car in Oakland. An informant led the detectives to the site of Long's body. Furthermore, Long's ex-husband, John Joseph Devaney, was discovered dead in a car near Hayward on June 14th, apparently from carbon monoxide poisoning in an apparent suicide. On March 16, 1973, Barger was scheduled to be sentenced for a different set of charges. He was found guilty of possessing narcotics for sale, 37 grams of heroin, and possessing a handgun while a convicted felon. Sharon, his companion then, was also accused, but her case was thrown out owing to a hung jury. Barger was sentenced to 10 years in prison, forcing him to renounce his leadership of the Oakland chapter for the first time since its inception. Despite his incarceration, Barger continued to head the Hells Angels from behind bars. During a motorbike run near Bass Lake before his arrest, he chose Fillmore Cross, head of the San Jose chapter, as his international successor. Nonetheless, Cross was imprisoned in 1975 for possession of amphetamines. During his time in prison, Barger received much support from his fans. A biker magazine launched a free Sonny Barger campaign, selling t-shirts and bumper stickers to help pay for his legal fees. Barger took advantage of media chances, interviewing many venues, including one with Geraldo Rivera for the television show Good Night America. In these interviews, he depicted himself as a model prisoner and expressed optimism for ultimate release, saying, they've got to let me out sometime. 
Barger also used his prison sentence to study sociology at Folsom State Prison. Barger won a key legal victory in April 1977. He successfully appealed for a retrial on a prior marijuana possession conviction. The California Supreme Court found that the five-year waiting period imposed on him due to his past marijuana conviction was unconstitutional. As a result, he was granted release. After serving four and a half years of his sentence, Barger was granted parole on November 3, 1977. Shortly after his parole on December 5, 1977, Barger took a key move by forming the first Hells Angels chapter in Canada. He granted Yves Le Boss Buteau, the national president of the Canadian Hells Angels, the honor of wearing a Hells Angels jacket with the word International written on the bottom, a highly regarded honor within the Hells Angels community, where jackets typically only indicate the member's residing state. Despite his release, Barger's legal problems were far from done. On March 27, 1978, he was arrested on a parole violation charge for gun possession. Police uncovered a 9mm semi-automatic pistol, a 38 caliber revolver, and a rifle when they arrived at his Oakland residence to serve a subpoena and conduct a parole search. However, Barger's wife, Sharon, testified in court that the firearms were hers, thereby dismissing the case against him. By 1978, the Hells Angels had grown outside California, establishing chapters in Nebraska, Massachusetts, Ohio, New York, Connecticut, North Carolina, and South Carolina. The Angels declared war on the outlaws in November 1978 during a meeting of chapter presidents in Rochester, New York, kicking off a conflict between the two gangs. The rivalry began in 1974, when outlaws bikers in South Florida retaliated against the Hells Angels chapter in Lowell, Massachusetts, over an incident in which a Hells Angels beat an outlaw at a party in New York City. The FBI stated that the Hells Angels and the Outlaws were fighting for dominance of the methamphetamine trade in the United States and Canada. Authorities charged the Angels with monopolizing methamphetamine manufacture in the United States. The Angels leader, Barger, admitted that some members were involved in drug peddling, but equated it to police enforcement personnel partaking in the same crimes. In the late 1970s, Barger and other top Hells Angels officials called a peace conference with the outlaws, which turned out to be a ruse to assassinate the leadership of their competitors. However, Karenite, the head of the Hells Angels East Coast faction, told the outlaws about the plot, which enraged the Angels' hierarchy and resulted in his dismissal. Barger and a group of Hells Angels attended the murder trial of a Hells Angels member accused of killing an outlaws member in October 1982. During the trial, the Angels made their presence known by intimidating jurors and engaging in provocative antics. Despite the efforts of the Angels, the accused member was cleared, and Barger even organized a party in his honor. In 1983, while undergoing treatment for his throat cancer, Barger briefly delegated administration of the club to his second-in-command, O'Farrell. He later succumbed to throat cancer in June 2022, but his was plagued with arrests, trials, and legal fights. And despite the issues and criminal accusations, he remained a prominent member of the organization both inside and outside of prison, leaving a lasting impression on Hell's Angels history. One question remains, how did Sonny Barger manage to stay out of prison even with all this? Share your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content. See you in the next one.